there are three documents that could end your life. And these documents are each a little bit unique. There are differences between them. The first one that nearly everybody um, does sign when they do their will is a medical power of attorney. And the medical power of attorney is very broad. It covers all kinds of medical decisions. Some of them are not life-altering or life-threatening. It may be that um, the agent that you've appointed has the right to put you in a nursing home temporarily or a rehab facility or the right to consent to surgery that's not life-threatening. So that can cover things that are just routine medical things as well as the ultimate decision of whether to keep you alive on a machine uh, or to let you go. So that that is a document that could end your life, but it also has a much more uh, universal use. And it's not you deciding directly up front that you do not want life support. The medical power of attorney is giving that decision to your agent to make the decision when the time comes based on the situation and your desires. The second document is a directive to physicians, and that's what's commonly called a living will. The directive to physicians is you telling the doctors directly you do not want to be kept alive on artificial life support. And you can be very specific. You can customize and tailor it to what kinds of things that you do want and you don't want. Some people want um, an IV with fluids, but they do not want a feeding tube. Some people um, don't want a... Um, a respirator um, or to be in, intubated, uh, but they do want a defibrillator if their heart stopped. So um, there are different kinds of life support and life um, giving machines that can be used. And the person may specify that they do want some and they don't want others or that they do want them only in certain situations and not other situations. It is taking the decision out of the hands of your loved ones and you making that decision yourself um, before the time comes when there are not, there's not so much emotion involved and that other person doesn't have to make that decision for you. The, the directive to physicians overlaps a little with the medical power of attorney in that the agent under the medical power of attorney can make that decision for you, even if you don't have a directive to physicians. But if you have a directive to physicians, then it can't be overridden by somebody else. Um, you, you are the only one that can revoke that. And federal law says that the doctors are required to um, honor your directive to physicians. The third document is called an out-of-hospital DNR. And it comes into play if EMS is called, because they're not physicians, they're uh, EMTs. And the EMTs job is just to get you to the hospital so that the physicians can take care of you. And so the EMTs uh, may be inclined to use CPR or defibrillator or some other means to resuscitate someone who's stopped breathing um, or whose heart has stopped uh, in order to keep them alive long enough to get them to the hospital. And if that person has already decided that they don't want to be kept alive, then the out-of-hospital DNR is the, the thing to have. And it is also a document that takes the decision out of the hands of your loved one. They don't have to feel guilty. They don't have to worry about whether they're making the right decision. You've already made that decision ahead of time for them. Um, on the other hand, it does take it out of their hands and they can't evaluate the situation when the time comes and say, well, this isn't exactly what we had in mind when we signed it. Um, so uh, it is a little bit scary in that you're making that decision not knowing exactly what the situation is going to be 
as far as when they'll be looking at that DNR and deciding we're just not going to treat this person. EMS is called, but they're going to keep hands off and they're not going to do anything to start your heart or to start you breathing again because you have this DNR. So those are the three documents to consider an out-of-hospital DNR, a directive to physicians, or a medical power of attorney. And some people do all three, some people just do one or two of them. Um, the least controversial is the medical power of attorney, the most controversial is the out-of-hospital DNR, but it's also the one that hospice will really encourage and sometimes require people to sign in order to get hospice care. I do. I did. I'm done. Come see me. <laughs>